Autopsy. Beanbag rounds fired by police killed Park Force man aged 95. According to an email press release from the Park Force Police, officers were sent to help a private ambulance company with a combative residence at the home. The Victory Center Park Force, a supportive living community for adults 65 and older, 65 and older, according to the website, Warner, that's the gentleman who was shot, was being involuntarily committed to the medical facility by staff at the Victory Center. When police arrived, Warner was threatening with the staff, or excuse me, threatening the staff and paramedics with a metal cane and a two-foot metal shoehorn. A shoehorn. Well, that uh, sounds pretty dangerous to me, the release said. Police demanded that he drop the cane and shoehorn, but he did not comply and picked up a 12-inch butcher-type knife. At this point, he was shot with the non-lethal instruments of beanbags, and anybody who's not familiar with this, you're basically shot with a beanbag shotgun shell. That's basically what it is. Uh, it still kicks with all the force of a shotgun shell. It's just designed not to penetrate your body, as, you know, birdshot or other things could do. So, you know, this man was shot with this. Another incident on these uh, non-lethal things, your tasers, your beanbags, your rubber bullets. And even if they don't kill you, they can have very serious uh, health effects, as was the case in this gentleman. He actually died from his injuries. So keep this in mind every time they say that, well, we use non-lethal instruments, we use the gas. You know, people have choked to death on gas, you know, pepper spray. People who are asthmatic, people who have gone in cardiac arrest from being tased. This man got uh, internal injuries from being shot with a pretty much a beanbag shotgun shell and died from those injuries. But uh, we'll see if anybody is ever going to be held responsible for the death of this man, age 95. I'm not exactly sure how dangerous a 95-year-old can be but if he's holding any type of non-firearm. Uh, but I guess the police in Park Forest thought that was necessary, uh, necessary to that situation. Now let's move on to this. Protesters call out APD on Friday's officer-involved shooting. This is a situation that happened right here in the city of Austin. A gentleman went to a bank after the bank had been robbed. Obviously, he didn't know that the bank had been robbed. So the police were like, maybe this is the suspect returning to the scene of the crime. The cops questioned the guy. He said, hey, I didn't know the bank was robbed. I'm sorry. I'll get out of here. The police say, hold, hold on, you're not free to go. The guy takes off running. The police chase after the guy, shoot him, and then after the, go back to that. I want people to see this. It says, go down a little bit, investigating the robbery. Police have confirmed that Jackson is not suspected in the benchmark bank robbery. So that's how investigations are going in the city of Austin. They're shooting people's dogs. They're shooting people who were not involved in bank robberies. But, you know, we find that out after we shot the guy, after he's laying dead on the ground with blood coming out of him. That's when we've concluded that he was not involved in the bank robbery. And even if he was involved in the bank robbery, you can't just chase somebody down the street and shoot him. Then we just have this whole big talk about George Zimmerman and so forth. So that's the situation with that. Uh, just cops acting wild, and hopefully somebody will be held responsible. You know, we've had uh, Art Acevedo, the chief of police here in the city of Austin. Hopefully he'll hold somebody accountable for that. FBI recovered 105 missing and sexually exploited children, which is good news because we don't talk too positively about the FBI that often, but it's a good thing we have this on here. The FBI says they've recovered 105 missing and exploited children over the weekend. Good. And let's go to the second quote. The FBI made the announcement on Monday morning and reportedly has arrested 150 pimps involved in selling minors through an underground sex trade that exploited missing children ages 13 through 17 around the country. So I think about the 1993 World Trade Center bombings. I think about the Boston bombing. Hey, don't look at any other pictures except these pictures. But we do have good FBI agents doing the good work of good men and women. So very much kudos to the people the FBI putting 150 pimps in jail and also 105 children are now free. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.